And I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, bam, I look good. Oh, okay. I'm thinking now maybe you guys can see me. Oh, okay. I'm thinking now maybe you guys. Okay. I'm thinking now maybe you guys can see me. Okay. All good now. Yay. Thank you, Barbara. I'm. I'm assuming maybe everybody, <laughs> we have lift off. Yay, Stephanie. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, this is nerve wracking. You guys have no idea how much stuff I have to figure out. And I say I'll do this stuff and I don't even really know what I'm doing in terms of all these cameras and all this stuff. So I'm a one man show <laughs> other than Tammy, who's my right hand girl, but she's like several states away and doesn't know all this jazz that's around me, but she does know the Zoom stuff really well. So anyway, great. I'm glad you guys are here. Thanks. I'm going to have to go back and look and see where y'all said you're from because I missed all that. Anyway, I'm pretty excited about today. Um, as you may have noticed, someone had asked on a YouTube um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, comment, and she wanted to know if I would do this because she's got to get a bunch of labels ready for in clothing for her kid. So I thought, hey, yeah, I can do that. I can not only show you how to do it for clothing, but you can also just do it on stickers to put on their supplies. Okay. Oh, this is cool. I see y'all talking to each other. I love that. All right. Well, you know what I got to do right quick in case I start hacking. I'm going to put a little bit of coffee in here. Sorry, I got to do it. Y'all see, I still have my bling anything here. <laughs> anyway. All right. So I'm ready to roll. So Here's the sample of what, let's see, the camera's blurry. So I gotta wait for it to catch up to me so I can see if you can see it. So I'm gonna put you down this way. Tammy's got her tea. Okay, here's a sample of what we are going to do. Uh, this one is for my little grandson. And as you can see, what I've done is I've put his name and I also put a little Mickey Mouse on there. And the reason why is that so blurry? Hey, Tammy, is that really, really blurry for you? Oh, you can't see that. Okay, let me share that. Hang on one second, you guys. Okay, this is what I wanted you to see. So this is what we're going to make. We're gonna make little labels that look like this. This is for my grandson. His name is Levi. This is one of the ones obviously that's gonna go in cloth. And obviously you don't have to put Mickey Mouse, but I am making them quilts. I used to be a quilter. I still do, do some quilting and I'm making them Mickey and Minnie quilts. They're twins. So I have Levi and I have Layla's. And if you, whoa, that looks weird. If you follow me on our Patreon group or any of the other places where I teach, I've taught y'all how to do this with offsets, with bling around it and that kind of thing. And I'm gonna put Layla's name obviously in this one. And I also am going to put her name in this one. And this will be towards the end of the class today because I am gonna show you how I went about making them and then ironing them in. And the type of iron I'm gonna use is a little bit different than what y'all have probably used. It's this Monocoat, and I can have a link for it down for you below, but they're a little bit costly. But I got this for another project I used to do, and it gets really hot, and it keeps its heat really well. The only thing is when I'm adding pressure, I do like to use something on top, and this is probably a little too big. I used to weave also, and I wove this thing. But anyway, put a little pressure on it like that. Of course, I've seen some people use those Dritz ones as well. 
And then some people even use um, a hair straightener to iron things onto little places like this. So, you know, you're not limited. But anyway, what we're going to use today is this product right here, which I, that looks really weird, doesn't it? This product right here, which we have used in the past. I like the Jolie's brand just because that's the one I have used for dark fabrics. And that's what I'm going to be showing today. All right, so let me get you off of that picture because that looks really weird. So I'm going to bring you back over to my Silhouette Studio. Okay, phew, that's better. All right, so here we are at Silhouette Studio, and I'm going to show you how I uh, go about getting these stickers ready. They can be, like I said, like you can either put them on that heat transfer material, or you can just make them as regular stickers if you want to have them on supplies that they have to take to school. Or, you know, maybe you have a filing cabinet or file folders or whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be for little kids. You can, stickers are useful for anybody. But to make this particular one, let me get my notes out. Here they are. Okay. The first thing that I had to decide to do, had to decide was what size I wanted to make these stickers because I wanted them to be pretty small because these are for little tiny kids. So what I did was I made mine two inches by 0.75 inches. So the first thing I did was I came up here to the little shape tool and I wanted the rounded rectangle because I wanted one that has rounded edges, eh, less apt to have little pointy things that might come up sometime. So I got the rounded rectangle and I came over here and just drew one. And as I said, I wanted the size of that to be something specific. So I clicked on it to highlight it. Then I came up here to where I can change the sizes of stuff. And right here is the lock. I'm going to leave it unlocked for right now because I'm going to make it, as I said, two inches wide. So I'm going to stick a two in there and hit enter. And I'm going to make it 0.75 inches tall, which is like three quarters of an inch. So 0.75 and hit enter. All right. So there's one right like that. Now, since this is just going to be the outer border of a sticker, I don't need there to be a fill in there. So I'm going to change the fill color to none, basically. So I come up here to the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to make that transparent like that. Okay. So I have this one right here and I hope y'all can see, everybody can see well, Tammy, is everything okay? I'm looking over there at my um, comments. It's about 20 seconds behind, so but time, mine is not blurry, okay. So here it must be working well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here now to the text tool on the left-hand side where the A is and click on that. And then I'm going to click inside of this little rectangle that I made here. And I'm going to type in the name Carter. It's Tammy's grandson. C-A-R. You know, I think I'll do it all in caps. A-R-T-E-R. -E okay. Now, I think, and you know what I should have done? I should have gotten a robot. Carter, Tammy's grandson, likes to call them Bobots. I should have had a Bobot to put on here. Uh, anyway. All right, so what I would do then is I would just make this smaller by zooming in like this with holding onto this little guy right here, the little box, and bring it up here so it will fit in there. So his name's a little bit bigger than my grandkids' names are. That's fine. Put it like that. And then if I wanted to put a Mickey Mouse for him, all that I do, and we learned this a lot in my classes that I teach, if you're not involved in the classes, you should sign up. There's some free ones over on my website, and then we have a lot more in-depth ones over on Patreon, and if you're curious about them, ask in the comments and they'll tell you. Anyway, so I would go to Google Images, actually, and I teach how to get really good images for this kind of thing, but it's not really crazy critical for this because it's going to be so tiny. So I just found this Mickey Mouse here. 
oh, oh, can you see that? Let me see if you can see new share. Nope. So what I found was this Mickey Mouse here and I right clicked on him. And if you have Silhouette Business Edition and remember that's good for Cricut machines too. All you have to do is copy the image and then come back to Silhouette and right click and say paste, just like that. So you probably don't want it that big, obviously. You probably don't want this color border behind here. And this is something that's really fabulous about using our software is that we can just go to over here on the right hand side where it says trace. And this looks to me like a piece of toast. A lot of people say they think it looks like a butterfly. I'm gonna click on the trace tool and I'm going to select the trace area right here. Now remember, you don't have to do a Mickey or a Minnie. You can choose any little image for a kid or if it's for a grown up, whatever, a flower, anything. But I'm just going to trace this and I'll adjust my tolerance or my threshold that's over here. Watch what happens. Watch Mickey and see when I move this threshold button, look what happens. So through our experience and our learnings, we've learned about where we want it to be. Like I wouldn't want it like that because if you notice his tongue is no longer showing up. So I would move this threshold back down to about there. That's about where I like it. And then I would just say, in this case, I'm going to say trace and detach. So when I click on this button, trace and detach, watch what happens. Okay, it doesn't look like anything happened, right? But check this out. I'm gonna move Mickey out and he is ready to go. I don't need this piece anymore. I'll just hit delete on my keyboard. I'm gonna squish Mickey way down so he'll fit right up on here. And actually, I think I'll zoom in using that ever favorite bug tool up here. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see how big we or small we need to make him to work. He probably will work just like that perfectly. And I can change Carter's name to a different color if I'd like, and I can even make it taller if I'd like, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks like that. Matter of fact, though, I think I will change his name to a black. So I come up here to the upper left-hand corner, click on this color swatch, and I can change it to black. So there's one done. Now let me zoom out. Okay, so here's the thing. We're going to use these as print then cut. So what we need to do before we start making more of these to fit excuse me, I'm going to group him first by selecting all of it, right click and say group. Just move it over a little bit. Now what I need to do is I need to come up here to the page setup. On the upper right hand corner, there's a page. Looks like a piece of notebook paper with a edge turned up. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm going to have to change this rather than the size of my page being automatic cameo. I'm going to change it to letter size. So that automatically makes it the size of what my printer can print. And I'm also going to change. No, I don't really need to change my cutting mat. So the next thing I'm going to do, good, I'm glad he loves <laughs> Mickey. The next that you must do, if you're going to do a print and then cut, you know we have to do this on in design space, we need to let it know it's a print then cut, have to do that in silhouette as well. And the way you do that in silhouette is come over here, this is the page setup panel on the left. We're gonna skip this because that's the grid settings. The next one over is the, are the registration marks. I'm gonna click on that. Look at nothing happened. Know why? Because right here it says the style, it's off. I wanna turn my registration lines on or my marks on. So I'm gonna click this drop down arrow and click on type one because I have a cameo, type one. 
So look at that. It put those registration marks right on there for us. Now, you may be wondering, can I put things, can I move this and put it here where that's, that cross hatching is? And no, you cannot. None of your print and cut can fit in that cross hatching area. And it cannot go outside of this red line that shows where the print and cut or the cut area is. If by any chance these red lines don't show up on yours, here's how you turn them on. Just come back to the page setup up here in the upper right hand corner, click on that, and then come down here. Notice I have checked show cut border. If I uncheck that, watch the red lines, they're gone. The border's still there, I just can't see it. So I'm going to show the cut border by having that there. And then I'm careful not to put anything the wee little teeniest bit beyond that cut border. So the next thing that I did for mine was I just clicked on this one. And then I came over here, way over here, to this little funny looking thing. It's called the replicate panel. It's on the right hand side. Let me get rid of the page setup panel. Come back over here, it's the replicate panel. I'll click on that. And look right here, it's gonna tell me how many rows and columns I can do. So I think, if I'm remembering correctly, I can do four across. Nope, I can do only three across. So let me get rid of this one. Click on this one and delete it. Highlight it and delete it. And so I'll probably move these apart just a little bit like that. Okay, now one of the things I could do if I wanted to was grab all of these and say fill page. So it's gonna fill the page with them, but I don't really like the way that it did that. So I'm gonna hit Control Z on my keyboard and go back to just having these three here. Gonna highlight them. And then I'm going to say, I want, I hope, a column of four. There we go. I think I can do four more and maybe like three more. And I'm not sure how many more, so I'll probably just do one row at a time. So what I've done was I went ahead and selected this bottom row by grabbing, holding down my mouse and just grabbing all three of those. Then I hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and notice my little mouse turns into a plus when I go over those. That means I'm gonna duplicate it so I can just drag another one down. So that's probably all I'm gonna do for right now here. The other thing I'm going to do, so I'm gonna click on all of these and we're getting a workout over here on these panels today. A lot of times during classes, we just go over one panel at a time, but we're just working, working them, baby. So we're going to come back over here to this transform panel this time. So don't let this scare you if you're new to this software. I promise you it's easy. Uh, just go step by step. Ask the people again, like I said in the comments, and they'll tell you. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have these spaced vertically. So did you, uh oh, I didn't have them all selected properly. But anyway, so let me just move these up here. So let's rearrange these a little bit. I could just do it by hand too. So I'm just gonna kind of move these around. I don't actually want them to touch. So I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna actually click this one and bring him way down to there. And this one, bring him here, take that guy out. I'm gonna click on this one and grab all these again. Once again, try this again, vertical. There we go. Do you see how that spaced them all apart beautifully? They're really even and look really nice and neat. That's especially important if you're gonna be selling these things that probably not with Mickey on them because that would not be legal. But if you ever wanted to sell something, it's nice to have them spaced like this. I'd also grab the same row then and come up here and align left. So they're all aligned nicely, perfect. 
So I could have done this in the very beginning. And so what I will do right now is just delete all these guys. And what I'm gonna do is just grab these, hold down my Alt key, drag another set over, still holding down my Alt key and drag another set over. So now they're pretty good, pretty well aligned. I'm happy with that. Now, you may be wondering, well, what about all this little space over here that you're going to waste? Not to worry, all you have to do is bring these two up here like this and they'll fit. And then what I did for mine was I grabbed one of them, hold down my Alt key and bring another one out and another one and another one and another one because I'm going to put some of them at the bottom, two of them there like that. And then these guys can get rotated when I click on it. Notice this green button here. I can rotate it. and I can bring it to fit right in here. I might have spaces a little bit too far apart. Like I said, this is live, so whatever I do, I do, I guess. All right, so I can just move all these guys over here because we don't wanna waste this space over here. This stuff's not free, right? So I can hold down my Alt key and just drag another one up here another one here and that's probably all I can do. Maybe one more, let's see. Click on it, Alt and up. Yep, I could do four of them over there as long as I move these so they're not touching. I don't want these to touch because that's the cut line right there. So let's pretend I'm gonna do this one and everything's nice and straight. These are a little crooked but let's pretend like they're straight. Let's check it out. Let's go up here to send. I want you to notice something. If you're using the Silhouette software and you go to send, I like you to notice what's going to cut. You know, anything with a red line around it is gonna cut. So obviously let's zoom in. This outer edge is gonna cut, but look what else is gonna be cut. Mickey here is going to be cut out, and we certainly don't want that to cut out. So let me zoom back out. Just have to be careful about this part right here to make sure you get the right stuff cut. So I'm just going to select all of this. And rather than it saying, well, you know, it says cut edge right here, and I've noticed this happened to me before, I'm going to change it to just plain cut. And that still has it cutting everything. But if I toggle it back to cut edge, let me zoom in. I want you to watch what's gonna to happen to Mickey. So right now he's gonna be cut out. If I once again go to cut edge, now notice it's perfect. So the only things that are gonna cut now are the outer part of this rectangle. And again, you don't have to make these for kids. Uh, my grandkids, they're only two and a half. They don't know their names, but I figured, hey, I can make this for them and they could do a little name recognition with it or something. They could label some other things and start to recognizing their name maybe. But anyway, if you have somebody that goes to school, this would be perfect. Or if you yourself as an adult have thing that, things that you'd like to make labels for, this works really well. So here we are over in uh, Silhouette and I've sent this to be made and I've changed it to just cut edge because that's all I wanted to do is cut the edges. Now I've got to come up here and change this stuff right here. Kind of the same thing we do in Cricut, but we have a couple blades we can choose from. I'm not going to use the auto blade. I'm going to use the ratchet blade. So all of these things are going to be changing depending on what material I select right here. So I'm going to come in here where it shows you to select your material. And I'm going to select, now believe it or not, I got so much grief over calling this stuff vinyl one time. People kept saying it wasn't vinyl, it was paper, but it's like it stretches, so it seems more like vinyl to me. But anyway, if you're looking for this material while you're in silhouette, they call it a heat transfer because it is a heat transfer printable dark fabric, look at this right here. And that's exactly what you're, we're using. If you remember what I tried to show in the beginning, it's the heat transfer 
printable dark fabric. So right now it says on this vinyl mat, my blade would be set at a two, my speed is five and the force is 10. Don't need to remember any of that, don't get scared. But if I change this now to heat transfer printable dark fabric, some of these may have changed. It's still gonna be a two on my blade, but it's now going to be these other numbers, which may or may not have changed. I can't remember because I didn't pay that close of attention. Anyway, so the next thing I would generally do is I would do a test, but I have already done this, so I don't need to do a test. Uh, let's see, Let me bring you back down here for a second and show you the material that I'm gonna be using again. Oopsie. Sorry. All right, so here's the material I'm going to be using again. And yes, it does get blurry, it has an autofocus. It's called Jolie's and it's for dark fabric. You can get this from Joann's or I'll have a link for it, an Amazon link for it below. But what you get is you get a sheet of stuff that looks like this. It's plain white on one side. And on the other side, it has lines. When you want, put it in your printer, you want to make sure that you put it in so that the plain white side is what's being printed on. So I put mine in like this because when mine comes through my printer, it goes like this and it prints on this side. So you'll have to know that about your printer. The other thing that you get with this material is a piece of parchment paper, which I will show using that in a little bit. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is have us go over, I have to make sure that it's still working right now. Okay, I've gotta turn my iPad back or my iPhone back on so you can see what I'm doing over there. I'll be right back. I'm not sure why that's not working right this very second. So hold on one more moment. Okay, here we go. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing over there. 
I'm not sure that you'll be able to hear me very well. I will speak loudly, but I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do over there is just load in my um, material into my, let's see, you're able to see this, right? Yeah, I'm gonna load my material into my printer first, print that, then I'll show it to you over there. And then I'm gonna put it into my machine to cut it and then I'll be right back. So here I am with my material over here. Remember I said I have to put the blue side down in my printer. So I'm gonna load this into my printer. Sorry, the blue side up in my printer. Put that in. And I've got to go to print. So I'm going to come up here to the very top and hit print on my printer. And you may not be able to see that right now, but I'm going to send it to my printer. I do want to make sure that the preferences say best quality because I want this to be really good quality. And I'm going to apply. So I am just gonna cut these for Carter. I did not make sure that I had them on there perfectly. Uh, so hopefully there won't be any overlapping, but they're going to be starting to print. They're printing and they should be coming out soon. The next thing I'll do is I'll put them on here. Okay, typically when you're doing something live, your printer stops working, but I'm gonna to try to pull it out and make sure that there has been enough printed along with the registration marks to show you what happens next. Okay. As you can see, this isn't gonna work perfectly because I don't have the registration marks down at the bottom. I think what had happened was I had a uh, wrinkled paper. Okay, sorry about that. What I think, ha what has happened is this last piece of paper that I have, I don't know if you can see how wrinkled it is. I think that's what happened in my printer, why it wouldn't print properly. You can see that part of Carter's thing was printed. Here's part of the registration marks. But then when it got caught in my printer, it didn't finish printing it. So this isn't going to work as a print then cut because it doesn't have all the registration marks. What I'm going to do is this was my last sheet that I had. So what I'm going to do is just put a regular piece of paper in there, let it print, and then you'll be able to see anyway how it's going to work for print then cut. So hang on just one sec. Now, you know what, y'all? I think that would take too much of your time. So what I think I'm going to do next is this. Thank you. 
here are the ones that I had done for my grandchildren. And they did work as a print and cut. This sheet here was half used up. And if you've watched my videos before, I show you how you can use a sheet that's half used up for some more work so that you don't waste things. Well, what I'm gonna show you now then is this. I'm gonna take one of these off for Layla's. Let's see, make sure I've done everything. Yeah. I'm going to take one of these and put it on Layla's shirt. Here's her little shirt. I've got to get my ironing pad out. Got this big old ironing pad here that I'm going to set down and I'm going to put this on top. Hey, Roxanne, if you're here, these look like the same rhinestones you used. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put her name in here. I think I'll cut the tag out so it's not in the way. I've got this little iron that I have here heating up. And just like always, let's see, I need to bring this down a little bit. Just like always, we like to preheat things, get the moisture out. Then I'm going to take one of those little tags that says Layla. So notice all you have to do is just go like this and you just peel it right off. Even though it's heat transfer, there is no carrier sheets, just like this. Peel it right off. It's not sticky at all because it's only activated by the heat. So I'll put that inside her shirt like that. And then the you would follow the instructions on your um, product that you have here. I think it says to do it for about 30 seconds at the highest heat that you have on your iron. I'm not gonna do mine that long. I'm just gonna go like this, put this right inside here, add some pressure and just start counting a little bit. So I basically counted to 20 and let's see how that looks. Okay, that, oh, ouch, it's hot. <laughs> Be careful. Looks great. Now, if I wanted to, I could go back on the back and do it again, just to make doubly sure. But I really think I have a good seal there already. This little knob on this gets hot. Like I said, I got this for another project that I did. These, this is really a heavy duty iron. It's not like those little tiny ones that you can get at Joann's. This one's made for bigger projects. Okay, so there we are, there's Layla. Let me turn it this way for you. And there it is, Layla. So that's all there is to it and you really can't feel it. It has a nice feel to it. It's not gonna be scratchy or itchy to your child's neck. Um, and again, as I said, you could do this for other clothing or anything like that. Now, if you weren't gonna do it for clothing, if you were just going to do it on a file folder, you would probably want to do it on just the um, adhesive vinyl. Let me show you. You do not wanna use this. You do not want to use this printable sticker paper from Cricut unless you have a machine that you can feed through the back. This will not go through my machine. It gets stuck every time. Most people have that same issue. 
if you'll notice, it's really, listen, it's really, really thick. It will not go through my printer. And unless you have a back feed on yours, I don't recommend you trying to use this on yours either. I recommend just the vinyl or the sticker, the vinyl, printable vinyl for making regular labels or the clear vinyl. And I do have one more copy of that over here. I can show you. No, I don't. No, I forgot to use all that up. Anyway, that's how easy it is to make these stickers. I'm sorry that over there my printer malfunctioned because then I couldn't even show you how to put it into the silhouette because it was not going to print then cut since it did not have, not getting clear, did not have all the necessary registration marks that it needed. It had this one and this one, but it quit, got stuck in the middle. And again, I think it's because this had gotten wet and damaged and it was wibbly wobbly. <laughs> so it didn't have the final registration marks. So what happens when you do live, I guess things just don't work sometimes, but it, basically they work really, really well. So do you guys have any questions? Let me look through and see if anybody had anything. Okay, so if you're using this for, for, for Cricut Design Space, someone asked. So let's go back to my um, share of my screen. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. No, I'm sorry, still in my so silhouette software, sorry. And... So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the design and I'm going to go up here to file, save as, save to hard drive, Carter, I'll just name it Carter. And I'm pretty sure this is going to work. There might be another step that we have to take, but let's just try it like this first. We need to change it to an SVG. Sometimes we have to save it as a JPEG. I'm gonna try SVG first. In general, we save everything as SVGs for Cricut Design Space, but I'm not exactly sure about this particular print then cut. So I'm going to go then to My mouse has stopped working for some reason. I can make my this work. Huh. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to show you that, but guess what? I will do a follow up video for this and I will show you on YouTube how to go from here to Cricut Design Space. So we'll just end the live portion here and then I'll make a follow-up video that I'll put on YouTube that'll show how to go from here to Cricut Design Space because for some reason, I'm gonna take the little battery out of my mouse to see if that's the problem. My mouse has stopped cooperating. <gasps> there he goes again. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Let's go to uh, File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive, we're gonna save it as Carter, and we're gonna save it as Carter SVG. I'm gonna save it as an SVG file, and let's see what happens with that over there. Yes, so we're gonna to go to Cricut Design Space. Here we are in Cricut Design Space, and I'm gonna to go to Upload. Upload an image, browse. Hey, let's see. Okay. 
There's Carter, open. So I'm not exactly sure how this time it's gonna come in. It contained the falling items are not supported. Continue, okay, so that did not work like that at all. So let's cancel that. And I'm gonna go back to Silhouette. I'm gonna to go to File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive. This time I'm gonna save it as Carter. And I should have been prepared for this, you guys. I'm sorry that I wasn't prepared to show you this because right now I'm just kind of winging it. Carter, same JPEG. Leave these like this, save. And go this, upload, upload an image, browse, Carter, open. Okay, here they are now. So we'll say complex, continue. And this is them now. The only other thing we'd need to do is come up here to the select any race button and do that. It selects the white space all around all of them. So we would go to continue. We don't want to just save it as a cut file. We want to save them as print then cut. So we would say save. Here it is. Insert it. And there they are. So the only other thing is though we may have to do is we might have to change these uh, depending on whether this is too large of a file. And let's look up here. If we look at these sizes up here, right now it is too large of a file. So we would probably need to change this, the, log, the highest number to 9.25, because you know that you can do with Cricut Design Space 9.25 by 6.75. So look, this is still just a little bit too large. Look, this is over 6.75. So if I go to make it, going to say to me, uh, no, that won't work. Say, okay. So I'd have to come back here and change this to 6.75 and hit enter. And now this should work. So let's go to make it. And there they are. And that's how you would do it in Cricut Design Space. Now let's look back one more time in Design Space and say you're wondering to yourself, well, how do I know that it's gonna cut around just these little squares or rounded rectangles here? As I've shown before in Cricut Design Space, an easy peasy way to know exactly what it's gonna cut is come down here to where it says blank canvas, click on that, and it doesn't look like anything happened. This frustrated me for the longest time. But if you come up here, you'll see there's a little word color. And if you click on this little box under the word color, you can change the background color to anything you'd like. And now you can tell the white part is what it's going to cut around, just the white part. So you can tell. So sometimes you're wondering, why did that box cut out behind my item? If you had done this little technique right here, you would have seen that there was indeed a white box behind your item and you needed to go back to uh, cancel and get rid of that white box, okay? So are there any other questions? Sorry, I wasn't quite prepared for that. So what I did was I went to file and I saved it as a JPEG over there in Silhouette Business Edition. You have to have the business edition to be able to save things as JPEGs or any of those other kind of files. Because watch, if I come, can you see this? If I come up here to help, Hey, did y'all see any of that screen over there? And <laughs> wait just a second. Did you see any of that? Uh, nope. All right. I'm looking, I'm watching for a second because y'all are 20 seconds behind me and I wanted to see if you saw that. You did not. Okay, so let me just go through this one more time then. I'm sorry, like I said, I'm brand new at this. So let's say, let me do this again. I'm over here in Silhouette, correct? You're here with me now in Silhouette. I'm going to go to File. This is for Cricut Design Space people. Go to File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive, and you're gonna save it. Since it's a print then cut, 
you're going to save it as a JPEG. So I'll just name this one Carter 2, number 2, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Okay, and I'm going to say save. And I'll just leave this as it is and say save. Now I'm going to go over into Cricut Design Space, and this time I'm going to bring you all with me. So I'm going to do a new share, and it's going to be Cricut Design Space. There you go. All right, so now I'm going to go to Upload. Browse. And I'm going to look for Carter 2, which is right here. And I'll say Open. So there it is right there coming in perfectly. So all I have to do is click on Complex and continue. And now I just have to come up here to where the select and erase tool is and select over here. And as you know, that gets rid of all the junk behind this print then cut that we don't want. So I would go to continue and I would click on this and say save. I could name it over here if I want to, but I'll say save. And now I can upload this image, click on it, upload. Oh, I'm not gonna upload, what am I doing? Let me go back. <laughs> I'm gonna click on this image and insert it. Okay, we already had one inserted there. Let me get rid of this guy that was already there. And I'm gonna change this canvas back because that was part of the trick I was showing you to make sure you know how to do. All right, so it comes in looking like this. The problem is it's too big for our print then cut because in Cricut Design Space, you know that the print then cut dimensions are 9.25 high by 6.75 wide. So I'm gonna change this width to 6.75 and hit enter and automatically that changed the height so that this will work now as a print then cut. So if I go over to make it, it's not gonna give me any issues. It's gonna draw this line around it for the registration marks. My machine will read this with a little light, but I'm gonna cancel that for a minute because so many of you have had problems with print and cut. A lot of times there'll be a white box behind your item that prints and cuts or cuts. And you're wondering why is that white box there? Or why did this cut? And I didn't want it to cut. One way you can tell easily what's gonna cut is if you come down here to where it says blank canvas on the lower right hand corner, click where it says blank canvas, and then you think, well, nothing really happened. But if you look up here at the very top, right under the word untitled or the title of your page, there's a little word color and a little almost invisible box. If you click on that box, the color swatch panel comes out and you can change the background to any color you'd like. I'm gonna change mine to this green. And so now, I can tell exactly what's gonna cut when I send this to print and cut. It's gonna cut around the outer border of this. There's no big white box behind that. So let's cancel this one more time. Let's see, I'm gonna change. Let's just undo, I guess. All right, so let's do one more thing here. Let's put a big box behind this just for the heck of it so you can see what I mean or behind part of this. So I'm gonna have this box here. Let's turn our canvas color back to white. Hopefully this won't be too confusing. Usually I don't like to go into too many things like this. 
I'm going to change the box to white. And I'm going to send the box to the back. Send it to the back by right clicking. All right, this time you can tell where that box is because of that line around it. But sometimes you can hardly tell that there's a box back there. And when you go to make it, okay, again, it's too big because I didn't resize it again. I went back too far with my undos. Here we go. Now when I go to make it, okay, it looks like it's gonna cut just perfectly, right? But I believe if I go to cancel and I come to this blank canvas and I change the color of it, you're going to see that it's not going to cut the way you wanted it to, even though it looked like it was when we went to make it. It's going to cut these ones at the bottom just fine. But then when it gets here, it's going to cut around these and then just straight up here, straight over there, straight down, and then around these because there's that white box around it. Now you would not know that probably, except for there's that line around it this time, but in general, you wouldn't know it if the background color was white. You would go ahead and make this and it looks like it's gonna cut out just perfectly, but all of a sudden it doesn't. So again, a good tip for you people using Cricut Design Space is when you're doing print and cut, always come down here to the blank canvas, change the color, and it gives you a better indication of just what is going to be cut. So I hope that made sense and it wasn't too much craziness for everybody. So I guess that pretty much wraps it up, unless you guys have a lot of questions. Um, again, I have a lot of classes either through Patreon that are very inexpensive, but I think well worth it. We have a free five session class over on my website for people just starting out with Silhouette software. And I think they're really, really helpful. Um, I really love the software. I like it for my Cricut machine and I love it for my Cameo. I use it for both. Um, and like I said, we're getting uh, more and more classes that we're doing with the Silhouette Business Edition. And we use the Business Edition because it has a few extra added features and because those of you who do use Cricut can use almost every feature in the Business Edition for your Cricut machine. There are a couple that we can't use, but almost every one we can. So what a, let's see, no design. Uh, huh. okay. Tammy, does anybody have any questions in particular? I really enjoy teaching these classes, as you may or may not know. I used to be a teacher. And you can never quite shut me up, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I just have fun. So I enjoy teaching. Hope you come and join me here, Facebook, YouTube. It's all fun. All right. I guess that's it then. Yay. Hey, Carmen, I'm glad. Thanks. <laughs> It always makes me feel good when you say you, you guys say you like the classes because sometimes, you know, I'm sitting here talking to myself or that little round dot that I see right there. And I'm wondering, like, I wonder what they're thinking. <laughs> so, all right. Going to get a fresh cup of coffee. I never did have to swing on this one this time, believe it or not. So I will see you all again soon. I will try to do a live again soon. Maybe it's a little scary, like I said, and especially when stuff malfunctions, but, um, I don't know. It's fun. So thanks again for joining me, you guys. See you all soon. Tammy, love you. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Oops, there I am. <laughs>